Alhamdulillah Allah Zawajal give us these rewards, these protections, these immense blessings and make us to feel this virtual community and the immensity of this community. I suggest for people who are watching at home as I'm watching at home is get yourself a nice pair of headphones so that you can truly hear the, the sound that resonating, the echo that's resonating and the beatific sound that is being produced. The more importance you put on to your hearing, the more the shaykhs can pull your soul to be in that presence. And all it takes is that you lock off your ears and let your soul to feel these recitations and the soul knows its way back. You don't have to ask for instructions, you don't have to ask how to do anything. The soul knows its way back to the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad All it takes is putting on some good headphones, close your eyes, see yourself on that carpet with them reciting, see yourself in the presence of the shaykh, see ourselves at Rosh Sharif and just enjoy the salawats and breathe and and feel the ambience of that energy and the soul will begin to feel and travel. The traveling of the soul is but just an instant, it doesn't take any effort, doesn't take any instructions, nothing. The servant just comes willing with ishq and love. When they come with love Allah bestows immense grace and immense blessings upon the souls and the shaykhs gather these souls and move into that presence to be dressed by the lights and the love of all awliyaullah, all Ahlul Bayt, all Ashab al-Nabi and the Sultan of all that love, the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad Alhamdulillah. Wa bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha. Bari shafati wa Surat Kareem. InshaAllah before we get to the khatam do we have uh, questions? There were some questions that people logging on and, and uh, how to, to do their tafakkur, the contemplations we covered many times. I think the guys were going to produce a, a video on the meditation and the steps on how to do the tafakkur, it's really not complicated. Only thing making things complicated is the mind. That people think that you know this is very specific, you do exactly like this and then it's something going to happen and I'm not doing it right, nothing going to happen. This is a way of nothingness. Tell yourself nothing is going to happen. I'm going to sit and empty my cup and empty myself of myself. And as soon as I sit and I make my tafakkur and I close my eyes, I visualize my shaykh is in front of me and I begin to play salawats, not sharif things that are of a beautific reality and that, oh my shaykh I'm sitting in your presence that let your light to enter into my heart. And I just breathe and I visualize that, I don't need to see it, I'm nobody to see. So remember always that this process is a state of nothingness. So a lot of the questions that come in about this and this and this is, is, is the reverse of nothingness. So in your state of nothingness, I'm nothing. I don't need to see anything, I, I just need to be with my shaykh, I need to have that light there that keep us in the presence of Rosa Sharif, send a light into my heart and make these salawats to be beautific and you're listening to the salawats, listening to the angelic reality of these salawats. And then you begin just to make the connection with the shaykh is one step. Then when you've made that connection with the shaykh and you're feeling the presence that feel and fill my heart with light, I don't need to see anything, I'm, I'm nothing, I'm nothing and keep negating yourself and say, now I want to do some zikr, I want to do Allah, Allah. And then you take your tasbih and you do Allah or you can do khafi by your heart. However it is, meditation is building the relationship and the connection and that's what's important. Don't make it complicated because that's your mind and that's the head. Stay away from the head. Take the basic instructions, email help me at nurmuhammad.com, we give you the basic instructions and begin to do it every day, every day, three minute, four minute, five minute, play your salawats, make the connection, see the presence of the shaykhs, visualize Shaykh Dagestani, Shaykh Muhammad Nazim and Haqqani, Sultanul Awliya and that you want to be in their presence, that shaykh take me to their presence, let us keep the company of these awliya, let us to be dressed by these lights and blessed by these lights.
when you do it, you do it and then you email, I'm doing this and then and, and I'm feeling this and I'm feeling these energies and I'm feeling energized and alhamdulillah. So make this process easy process, it's nothing complicated and nothing hard, it's just up here in the mind of people that makes everything hard, makes everything complicated and they have big expectations. Lose all your expectations in life of everything and you should be happy with everything. Means if you expect nothing, you'll be happy with anything. It's the expectation that comes that ruins everything. There's not what I expected and then whatever came it was ruined and not felt. So our life of the reality of sifat as sabr and patience is expect nothing, say, I'll be, I'm nothing. I came through a door of annihilation, not expecting anything, I just want to sit to make the connection and that enter my heart, Ya Rijalullah that send your light into my heart and let me just to feel these energies and to be in the ocean of energies. And then we keep negating ourselves and negating ourselves inshaAllah until we are able to understand the rabita and understand the connection, inshaAllah. <coughs> As Salaamu Alaikum dear Shaykh Walaykum As Salaam wa Alaikum What dua can we make if we are struggling with our daily character and bad habits, how to break this vicious cycle? You know the, the concept of a, a dua is something different that to make a dua to relieve something where the tariqah is coming and actually telling us, you have to work a program, this is something we have to work at, this is a lifetime struggle. There is no magic remedy, you make a du'a and the character becomes, you know, beatific. This is about all of our practices and all of our teachings. So you say, oh I should learn meditation, I should learn tafakkur, I should learn how to sit and contemplate to connect the energy, this is the foundation. From this we're going to build an entire structure. So it's based on, I have to come sit with this shaykh, he's a shaykh of tafakkur, his ijazas are in tafakkur and, and how to make the connection and I want to learn how to make the connection. When I begin to learn the connection then I learn about energy, I learn on how to protect my energy, how to bring uh, beautific energy, how to take away negative energies, all of these and attending the majlis, attending the zikr and then giving support, locking yourself with the shaykh, locking yourself in one direction, I'm supporting, supporting, supporting. And I'm so locked onto this shaykh and the teachings that my heart is locked onto that way. I'm not here and there bouncing around and then all of a sudden you begin to feel this immense light and immense reality that begin to dress the servant. All of those are necessary for bad character to go. There's no du'a that you come give me du'a and I go back out to do my horrible things or live a, a dunya life. This is a way of life in which you come, sit, dedicate, meditate, contemplate and evacuate. <laughs> you begin to leave the body with all of their teachings, they'll lock you. Then they begin to crush you, they begin to grind it and teach you like, stay quiet in your things, stay quiet with your character, do all of these things that grind the person until the soul is free from the body. And they begin to feel the energies, they experience what other people are not experiencing and they keep that to themselves. But it's a whole system, you say if they give you all these 10 things for example to do and you don't do one of them and then you say, well how do I reach to the end? It's a whole system that we play the game, we go from each level, each level, each level. We have to get all of the prizes at each level, all of the rewards at each level, all of the medallions of each level. Each month is like a level. So these 12 maqams and these 12 months did we get everything that we needed in Ramadan? Did we take the dressings, take the blessings? Because with all those lights and characters and, and what we achieved in, in Ramadan and what Allah wanted to dress us in Ramadan, now Allah lifted us into shahwal. So that's a maqam now, you're in this next level of the game is shahwal 
and Allah is now taking you closer to the throne. So with all these medallions of course now there's going to be devils in that level and that those devils are coming to take away these medallions that Allah has dressed upon us, all these beatific lights the devils are coming to take them away. So then at that level there's the salawats, you open up the app and say shahwal that these are the, the zikrs that I should be doing, these are the name of Prophet that ni'matullah to, to dress me Ya Rabbi. And all of these practices is that now we can survive the level of shahwad, not only survive but to thrive in which we did good. The shaykh warned us we're entering into this, the shaitans are hitting us and we're going to defend ourselves. You need that for now the next month that's coming. So if you don't do anything and you gave yourself completely to the rubbish and, and every type of satanic thing then you're surprised by Zul Hajj, the twelfth month where is a hajj and there's a meeting with Sayyidina Mahdi salam on Zul Hajj on Arafah. How, how any, anyone going to feel that if they didn't, they didn't do good in shawwal? And that's when they say, oh I'm doing things but nothing opening for me, mm, yeah. But you have to play each level to perfection. And you have to get the rewards of that month, the rewards of those tajallis, the rewards of those understandings. Even we'll put out in Ramadan iqra that you have to have a pen, the, 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 the shaykh's pen is more powerful than any weapon on earth. When they say the pen is mightier than the sword means his knowledge is more powerful than any weapon. So why would a shaykh have to carry a weapon in, in bad days or in, uh, something to attack and to fight and to beat people? His knowledge more powerful than the jinn. When Sayyidina Sulaiman wanted to bring the throne of Shiva, the ifrit said, it take a few minutes. But the, the, the awliya who had the knowledge of the book of Bani Israel, not even knowledge of the book of Sayyidina Muhammad Qur'an al-Majeed. He said, from the book of Bani Israel, I bring it before your eye even blinks and he brought an exact duplicate of the throne of Shiva in front of Sayyidina Sulaiman That's power, his, Allah saying, his power is more powerful than the ifrit and the shayateen and the jinn. So th this way is then based on a pen. You have a life in which you're taking these notes, you're taking these realities, you're writing all of these. That pen they'll later teach to you the reality of qalam. Qalam is the, is the holy speech of Sayyidina Muhammad So when you hold the qalam, with that level of ihtiram you're holding the holy speech and the symbol of the holy speech of Sayyidina Muhammad So what type of secret and reality that Allah put onto the people of this qalam in which they understood the reality, they understood the reality of the holy speech of Sayyidina Muhammad is the qalam of Allah this is our imitated qalam in dunya because we're not there. So Allah gave us to understand you have an imitated alam al qalam that I'm giving you an imitated reality one day you know what this reality represents. And if you do know what it represents and you spent your life writing, writing, writing these realities Allah make you to be a qalam for Sayyidina Muhammad in which Prophet is holding your soul in his hand. When he wants to speak he merely move your tongue and all the words are flowing from the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad No ocean can contain and no, no tree can finish these words that Prophet want to give from his holy heart. Is the treasure of Allah is the heart and the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad that he holds these awliyaullah that understood that reality and they are the holy pens of Sayyidina Muhammad So means all of these systems that they have put in place, if we work it, immense realities. If you take piece by piece, maybe here and there, inshaAllah. Uh, as salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah How can one sit comfortably for tafakkur for longer periods of time? You have to ask the guys at the center, they're sitting on a very hard wood floor for long 
<laughs> long night, <laughs> three hours, four hours at a time that uh, you learn in your life. As you get older you, you did it so much that now you have arthritis. But if you're a little bit younger and you do it, you realize the state of pain and the immense reality of pain. Pain is a, is a, a state of awareness that when pain comes to you it's uh, many different realities. When pain comes to us uh, a reality in, in which Allah wants something so that you understand you're being tested, that you understand the difficulty of the physicality, how to endure with that pain, how to endure with that difficulty, with that test. And then it keeps us to be awake that when we're meditating and contemplating, when we would sit in a position for long period of time, the uncomfortable position that you take is so that you don't sleep and that your meditation doesn't become a sleeping festival because you're so comfortable that you're just dozing off. So this is a, a, is a great awareness and consciousness that every test that Allah sent, every difficulty, every pain, every hardship is like a bell for you to leave the body. Because as soon as pain comes to the believer who's contemplating, meditating and, and Allah throw him into an ocean of sickness and difficulty, it's by virtue of his tafakkur and his training and meditation he was able to survive that because the body was in so much difficulty that the soul wanted to escape. And Allah created a difficulty in which the soul would escape as a relief to Allah that any servant who was in training and began to become sick they understand what a sincere du'a is. When they put their head on sujood and they're begging Allah to take away a pain, take away a difficulty, take away some sort of position that they're in. They're praying with all sincerity and Allah knows that, that when this difficulty comes onto the servant they're crying and they understand the reality of, of sincerity, they understand how they, they have to do all of that to be given a relief and as a result of that then they pray that Allah keep them with that level of sincerity even when days are good and health is returned to goodness inshaAllah. And if not then they live with whatever difficulty Allah gives to them through patience and, and perseverance inshaAllah. But all of this is, is based on, on these practices. If you make yourself comfortable we fall asleep. Even in our training in the beginning the sleep was always in an uncomfortable place so that we wouldn't sleep long and we wouldn't sleep deep. That as Prophet was teaching to sleep on a bamboo floor in which they would see the markings of the bamboo on the holy skin of Sayyidina Muhammad It was a teaching that at times you, you can't get up for fajr because the bed is too comfortable. So when we were younger you'd sleep on a position that was very difficult, very hard, very uncomfortable. So that the sleep was not deep and the sleep was something you, you did and you struggled to get through and not many hours of sleep. And that when the practices are strong and, and all of the practices are strong there's not that much sleep required. Four or five hours of sleep is sufficient for the body when the person is doing their practices in a strong manner. If they're not doing the practices then they need the eight hours, nine hours of sleep. But inshaAllah Allah whatever you know based on your youth and based on the age you practice to your ability because when the age goes the body doesn't have that ability to do those things like exercise and endurance and an endurance for the body. As you become older then sleep is, is, is more sensitive, your, your body is more sensitive. So while you're young and trying to become from the people of tasawwuf it's a big blessing that Allah in, in the youth of somebody gives them the ability to move towards the Divinely Presence and to struggle with themselves and, and their characteristics inshaAllah. As Salaamu Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam uh, I understand that our difficulties arrive to correct our character. How then do we keep on the path of good manners when facing such difficult situations? Well, I think it's what we talked about all night 
that uh, the whole the whole of Islam was based on that reality that when they came to Prophet and decided, okay we're going to accept Islam now do what to expect and said it's expect a, a dress of affliction and difficulty and hardship and poverty that this is the given that we're going to be tested and if our Islam is going to be real Allah is testing us. So then when Allah really loves and that's why we say there's no guidance except if Allah really guides a servant and these are levels of guidance. When Allah truly is guiding a servant to these darajats, He's sending them to these schools because you don't hear it in a Friday Jummah and now Jummahs are, are all uh, political. And they barely make reference to Sayyidina Muhammad anymore and Prophet described the day will come where my name won't be mentioned in the masjids. But that's a different talk. This talk is about that when Allah wants to guide the servant, He sends them to the schools of guidance. They give them all the awrads, the apps, the zikrs, the salawats, the energy that are coming from the associations. And all of these practices are so that you can survive these testings and to achieve what Allah wants the servant to achieve. Imagine without all of these teachings, how does anyone survive their bad character, yelling, screaming? If they're not being trained for heavens, you're telling me in their work environment with the worst characteristics of what work taught you and what your school taught you. You know the schools and high schools and colleges that you went to, they taught you and taught all of us the worst manners. They, they made humans into rubbish people, they taught everyone to argue with their professors and debate them, challenge them which was exact tariq al-adab against the adab of the heavens that you are to respect your teachers, you're not to debate the teacher, you're not to question the teacher. But coming from college that's all people want to do is they want to challenge you. They think this is great like a professor at school, I'll challenge him and he'll like it that I, oh I, I flipped his, his, his understanding upside down. These were all the horrific uh, manners that this dunya is teaching people. And then they go to the corporate and office world where everyone is a shark destroying each other cheating and lying against each other, backbiting and deceiving each other so that someone gets fired and the other one gets promoted. So where would people learn manners? Ninety percent of the Muslims that are going to work and then and going from college where are they learning manners and they're not and that's why you see them screaming on the street and their faces angry, yelling, screaming and they don't understand that this is not going to save you, this is not going to save anyone. And that you have to have good character and Allah with good character will send support. So truly when we're guided we make extra sujood every night that, Ya Rabbi thank you for guiding me, thank you please continue to guide me towards these realities, towards this good character. Had you not guided me I would have surely been lost and I would have surely been the one whom screaming the most, inshaAllah. Um, as salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Wa alaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah Last week you said something like we can't reach divine state if we are angry because we must be off and not on. Is this true for all emotions like joy and sadness? Is serenity off or on? No, I love when people quote me and I don't know if it's an accurate <laughs> quote. <laughs> Because last night somebody quoted too that, oh you said don't do like that, then we said like that. So everyone is hearing exactly what they want to hear, not what I've said. So that's, that's a big danger that you hear what you want to hear and then quote it in a maybe capsulized and maybe out of context. So it's, it's very different that the state of effacement and to, to enter into one of the states of understanding is anger. So to control one's anger is important to take that battle onto your plate that, Ya Rabbi I'm going to control my anger and I'm going to put a sign on myself, a band, a rubber band, something on me that I'm working on anger for 40 days. 
I'm going to learn how to make my wudu, keep my wudu, I'm going to put something in my mouth because I know my mouth quickly going to say something back. So those are all the practices of anger for if you are angry, if we go back to that talk, then you can't say that you're reaching towards realities because the reaching of realities and true meditation, true energy is what Allah gave as a description to Prophet khuluqul azim. He didn't say, MashaAllah you are the amazing Hafiz of Qur'an or MashaAllah you have such a huge ummah and immense warriors. Allah's greatest title and secret that He's signing in the Holy Qur'an, khuluqul azim means azim is for Allah that your, your khuluq and your character is magnificent and munificent. So that is the whole caption. So everything that we're doing in our deen we should have this character. If you meditate all day long but you're like a fiery you know, dragon, not even a good dragon, a bad dragon and you're just fiery and angry and angry then you're, you're doing something wrong because it's not affecting you correctly. The energy is supposed to be changing you to be angelic. Because the true Divinely power that begin to dress the servant is they become like water. So in your material state, your form state, you're very solid, block-minded, sort of can't fix you, change you, deal with you. What is the state that they want is your lucid state where you enter into your water reality, right? You're not an earthbender, you're water. And in the state of your water reality you are closest to the angelic reality because the angels represented by water. Because Allah said, my throne is upon my, my is mim for Muhammad and alif for Allah So the secret of my and water is that Allah is saying in this Muhammadan character the izzah of Allah going to dress you and that your nature will be liquid. Wherever we put you, you, you you're okay, you get along, you flow, you go with the, the flow of things, you're not rigid in, in how to, to deal with everything. And because of their water state and the softness and angelic state that they carry and able to deal with people and answer and, and interact with people. And from water to ethereal is but a second. So they're not fiery state in which they're ah, burning everything. But because of the water state they can be quickly boiled into an ethereal state in which that's why they, they have many different spiritual experiences because they're ethereal. So from solid these are the states of matter, nothing happens. You have to be burned, burned, burned through solid to become like liquid. Once your liquid and tajalli and energy touches you immediately ethereal and they have spiritual states in which their souls are moving into the Divine the Presence. So that's the reality of, of conquering anger and, and the characteristic of learning how to lose the bad characteristics to enter into that reality. And then we talked about love last week that you haven't really experienced anything as a seed. So all these emotions that you mention and anyone mentions those are really not you have you have not experienced them. So when somebody won't talk about love they experience love as a seed. And we described last week that what is the love at the stage of a flower in which every petal it feels the sunshine and as a result of feeling the sunshine it begins to give its fragrance. Some roses are so strong that they stop people in their track just to smell them. And the people have to take that rose and begin to crush it to take its oil and its fragrances out. So that's an immense state of love. You can't say that to a seed. The seed you put in the sun all day long it doesn't make any fragrance for you. It just get hard and you throw it at somebody, it's not going to give anything. And one seed planted may put out thousands of flowers and thousands of fragrances. So we haven't experienced love, you haven't experienced any, any, any of these emotions from the level of the soul. So by turning the physicality off 
and always wanting to feel through the physicality and to win every argument and to feel justified and going home feeling justified, turn yourself off, 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 off until Allah says, now you're so off I'm going to let you feel from your soul. You feel the Allah's Divinely love and Divinely grace, you feel compassion for, for the all of creation. You look at creatures and you can feel the compassion for these creatures that Allah created them all with love. You look at nature and feel the compassion and the, the beauty of everything around us. And that's somebody whom is experiencing these emotions through their soul and not the body. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzat amma yasifoon. Assalamun al mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Illa shaykh al Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam alayhi wa sahbihi kiram. Wa lana shaykhina fi tariqatuna shpandiyatul aliyah wa sahir wa sadatina wa siddiqeen al Fatiha.